Welcome to another panel from Gun Gamers. We rarely finish these in one take without blacking out and never using the footage. So if you're watching this, this one's special. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about gear for large individuals. Because we have sitting at this table three large individuals who all have to buy gear for BB Wars at various points. And as a result, we consider ourselves somewhat knowledgeable about buying gear for large individuals because we've all been playing this game for a long time and we've all been large for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been even larger at one point in time, which makes me even more of an expert. So uh, <laughs> I'll start off by uh, going over in general. So what are like our general measurements here, like height? Weight, I, you know, waist, chest, that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, I'm gonna blame my wife's pregnancy on this, but I'm now 260. Uh, <laughs> I wear around a 38, 40 waist. Shirts are generally XLs. I don't know dress shirts. I wear blue collar. Uh, <laughs> that's about about what 510, 5'11. So hefty and stout. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm about six foot three. I'm about 255 pounds. This is my last weigh in. Uh, I wear about a 38 jean. My true waist size is about a 38, uh, but I have to buy a size up for most things for reasons we'll discuss. My chest size is about a 46, and then my neck is just about 18 inches. Uh, so I'm also a large individual, uh, large in different ways by some people's standards. And then uh, back in the day, I had about a 44, 46 inch waist. Uh, I was about 345 pounds, and I was still 6'3", and I think I had about 20, 22 inch neck almost. It was, uh, it was a big boy. Then you got Corey. So I'm about 5'10". Um, I wear an XL shirt. I have a 36 waist, but I really wear a 38 because I have thunder thighs and a really large butt. Um, <laughs> and uh, did I say I'm 235 pounds? Yeah, about 235 pounds. We'll say that. Uh, right now, um, probably 245 because uh, I really like food lately. So all of us are larger individuals, and I forgot to mention, I usually wear an XL tall for shirt sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got a good sampling of the big and tall. Real quick, I'm going to tackle one thing. One of the main things I see when people post on Facebook or in forums saying, I'm a big guy and I'm looking for airsoft gear, the number one comment that semi-irritates me, like I understand why the comment's made, but it kind of irritates me, is we'll lose weight. I get that. I've been there, done that. I lost 100 pounds and it was fucking great. But losing weight in a steady and consistent manner that lasts can take years or months or however much amount of time. So telling someone, oh, lose weight before you play airsoft, that doesn't fucking help when this guy has an op coming up in two months and you expect him to lose 50 pounds. You don't lose 50 pounds in two months unless you're throwing up every meal and that's called a fucking eating disorder. So you went on a tangent and I love it and I wanna feed off that. So as a fellow fat man, well, fuck you, Corey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I hear that all the time. And especially like we do a lot of, well, a fair amount, I think, of Milsom West. We do a lot of the East mm -hmm. Coast games for them. Um, and there's plenty of people that go to them there. Oh, fucking fat guys, they're not gonna make it through. You gotta be in shape. You gotta do all. You have to be in decent shape. It's really more of a you mental have thing. To, yeah, mental can thing. you mentally yeah. just get through it? It's um, definitely a mental thing. And I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, I never got this guy's name, but I wanna say it was at Balkar Ridge, the first Balkar. This guy had to be, he was probably about the size as you used to be, like pushing 350. Probably shorter though, maybe six foot at most. Big dude, and everyone's like, he's gonna wash out. This dude's gone. That game had an obscene attrition rate. Like so yeah, many wasn't people it like bailed. Sixty or seventy percent. It was terrible. And, then, <laughs> and this guy, uh, at the end, still there, made it to the end, got his patch, and all these high speed guys with their cry gear, the GMR packs, we got this bailed night one. So <laughs> yeah. You know, big guys have their uses, too. Yeah. A want... BB from a fat guy is just as much a hit as a BB from a fit guy. Also, so. you want an M60 or a tripod out there? 
It's usually not your small little fast guys. No. It's the me's. It's, <laughs> or it's me. Yeah, you know, I'm just a freak, I Which guess. Which is just terrible. Well, when a 240 Bravo looks like an M4 compact. <laughs> 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 so I wanted to tackle that real quick. So... Let's start off by uh, going over some general shopping concepts for any larger individuals watching this or anyone buying for a larger individual. I know we've got some uh, significant others, maybe parents or friends, you know, doing some Christmas or holiday shopping. So let's start with the basics. What should big guys not try to wear? Oh, I love that you started there. So big guys... Don't go, especially with the knockoff brands of like JPCs, because they all come in a China small. And it'll cover about here to here. <laughs> and a plate is uh, actually not a plate, but uh, like soft armor, which I've had actual stuff for. You're supposed to cover from your collarbone to your navel and then across. These guys wear ones that go like nipple line to about three inches above, and they're yeah. like, it's good. Well, even with uh, <laughs> real body armor. Yeah. Even yeah. with, you know, like plate carrier body right. armor, like armor plates, you're supposed to cover, you know, about the top of your sternum down to just about your navel. Yeah. That's what you're shooting for, for real body armor coverage. And then you want to cover, you know, broadly as much as you can cover without impeding your movement. Mm -hmm. So for me, that tends to be like a large plate. If they have like a large tall plate, that might even mm -hmm. be better. Uh, XL plates kind of impede my movement, but I'm a weird dude and I do a lot of weird movement. So I usually use uh, large plates, and this is a uh, Mayflower large extra large plate carrier. We'll talk more about those concepts, but I'm with Matt. Don't go with knockoff branded plate carriers. 99% of them are sized for size medium. Yep. If you are not a size medium, you do not want a size medium. Now, some brands will actually have different sizes in their knockoffs even. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mahdi and Fly offer like large and extra large variations of some of their plate carriers. Those might actually be things to look forward to. Um, uh, but I know I, I'm betting we'll hit this a little later, but TMC, I believe, offers two different size helmets also. Yes. For those with large heads, which is also something I wanted to talk about. Large that, heads uh, will definitely be something we talked yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is a struggle I have more than anyone at this table. But that's another thing. Helmets. Don't buy helmets that don't fit you. Yes. Uh, if you are of any doubt about if a helmet comes in your size, if you have a head that is like 24 inches in circumference, honestly, it's expensive. Buy a real helmet if you can afford it. If you have to, if you pick up a hat that's like fits one size fits all, and it stretches when you put it on, you're not gonna fit. Or a clone if you helmet. can't fit a one size fits all hat, don't fucking buy a clone helmet. <laughs> not gonna work. I have yet to find a clone helmet that fits me, other than the uh, what was it, the JC Airsoft airframe. Yeah. Actually, if I adjust the padding just right in that, I can just almost get it to fit yeah. me. Uh, but in general, I recommend buying something real. Uh, this is a Team Wendy, an XL. Works great. Another thing not to do if you are a big guy. Don't buy replica uniforms for the most part. And yep. I say this just from my experience. I've never had a replica uniform set. I've destroyed plenty of real uniform sets. And replica uniform sets... I chew through those like candy. I used an FFI combat set at one half of one game and destroyed it. And they're really hit or miss because yeah. I have a, an Emerson combat set, which I would take issue with the fact that they designed those pants to be low right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've worn it for two different Milsom Wests and it has survived both. So, I think your issue is often your thick boy with three C's <laughs> thighs tend to blow out pants. Yeah, yeah um, and that might be what it is. But I generally, the reason I say to stay away from replicas is purely for sizing concerns. You're lucky that you're like kind of short enough yes. that a lot of those work, but for tall guys like me, those usually don't come in tall sizes. So, for the FFI set, I bought an XXL. Because according to their sizing chart, that was meant for up to a 38 to 40 inch waist and up to a 34 inch inseam. I am a 34 inch inseam. The knee pads were on my thighs. 
on top of the fact that they were too tight. They weren't made for a large person who's a 38 to 40. They were made for like a skinny person who somehow had like a weird Oompa Loompa body mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just didn't have any legs, but somehow had a 38 inch waist. That's a hilarious image. That being, yeah. And that being said, even with uh, like real uniforms, like I use a mm-hmm. lot of, I use a lot of true spec. Same. And I'm a large regular. Um, but here's the issue with being a large regular because I have such big thighs and big hips. I will rip out the crotch on a large regular set of pants, even if they are real, like true spec or proper. Yeah. So a lot of the times I'm buying extra large regulars yep. and then they're too long on me. So now I have to get extra large shorts, which are mm-hmm. still kind of awkward because they're a little bit short and just really baggy. Um, and you just, I mean, if you're a big, like thick boy, uh, you might want to consider just going up one size. Yeah. So uh, two things. You both made me think of things. I just didn't get a chance to pop in. Um, with Corey's, with the crotches, uh, I don't know about you guys, I always look for gusseted crotch. Mm-hmm. That's where there's the extra piece of fra- fabric yeah. that covers the seam. Yep. Because um, I have blown out pants more than once. Yep. Uh, Caspian last year comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. I finished a charge with my, you know, schlong hanging out pretty much. <laughs> I had, I had it boxers, was pretty hot. But I was were, pretty into it. They were bright orange and it was real fancy. Um, <laughs> And the other thing is with uh, having, per se, real gear, like real um, uniforms, that doesn't mean you have to be cry or the most no, expensive. No, 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 not at all. Like, I do proper a lot. And proper I like their, great. They're solid. Yeah, I You're really like proper. proper right now. <laughs> yeah. I really like proper. I really like true spec. True spec is probably one of my favorite, like, mm-hmm. budget-oriented uniform sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, the disruptive combat pants I've been messing with lately, those are also expensive, but they're useful in different ways. Uh, Beyond are really good, but pretty much equally expensive to cry. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. You know, there's a lot of and surplus uniforms. Surplus yes, uniforms yeah. are super available. And, and also, uh, kind of a fastball Wrangler. Mm-hmm. Wrangler makes really good pants. I, I actually wore Wrangler stuff. combat pants, not combat pants, Wrangler cargo <laughs> pants yeah. to uh, the Seneca Directive for uh, for just being that with my DCU top. Yeah, surprisingly Other. bad were my Carhartt pants. Oh, those yeah. are the ones that ripped out yep. on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, "Oh, Carhartt," and I'm running militia green pants. These are fine. Yeah. Literally made it through one part. So, are- what do you do? We've talked about some don'ts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you do for big guy shopping? Number one recommendation I want to make is uh, I say this as I have a plate carrier on the table. We will talk about plate carriers, but a number one recommendation I want to make for most big guys shopping is avoid plate carriers. And the reason for that is you are carrying enough mass as it is. And as a large man, still true to me, I'm still a sweaty dude. It actually just goes for anyone that runs hot. Yes. I know skinny dudes that do too. Oh yeah, exactly. Anyone who runs hot, but larger dudes I notice especially, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, I still have this problem. You run hot, you run hot and you need ventilation. And as a result of one, not wanting to carry too much mass, and two, needing ventilation, I highly recommend chest rigs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I recommend chest rigs for most airsoft use, for most players, but especially for big guys, because, Corey, if you would like to demonstrate with your Mark II chest rig, a lot of chest rigs are designed to run over armor. And they're designed to run over armor on a wide variety of individuals. The real military has a wide variety of people in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. So if you're a large fucking dude and you're carrying a lot of body weight and you have maybe, let's say, even a 50 or 55 inch chest, which is extreme, but a plate carrier, not a plate carrier, a chest rig might be designed for that because a guy my size, which is large for being in the military, but a guy my size with a 46 inch chest with body armor and cold weather gear on might still be expected to strap that chest rig on over it, which then puts me at easily a 50 inch chest. Mm -hmm. So that's a great recommendation for anyone in general is to ditch the plate carrier and go for a ventilated chest rig. Yep. Uh, Well, um, if you're going down that, there's kind of a happy medium, which coincidentally mm-hmm. I brought tonight. Yes, um, you did. I don't usually run this kind of a rig, but I just put this one together for uh, Milson West Saratov, Spearhead Saratov. Yes. Because we're running militia, 
and now it turns out that we're gonna run black for our group. Um, so I needed something quick, and so I went with this guy, which this is a knockoff version of the South African Assault Vest. I can't get up there. So it's got a lot of mesh, which allows a lot of air to breathe. It's really open on the sides. So it gives you a lot more protection and cover, but it also breathes a lot. Yes. But it gives you that hydro on your back. It gives you space to strap stuff in like you get with a plate carrier, but without holding all that heat in. Yep. So, yeah. And the Mark II chest rig, uh, I mean, the, the thing has so much space for it. I mean, inside of the cargo pockets, uh, these big GP pouches on the sides, it has Molly in there. So you're going to be able to carry everything you need. I've got two grenade pouches on here. I can carry eight magazines if I want. I've got another admin pouch on top of the cargo. I can put, you know, I have my tourniquet here. I can wear a backpack comfortably with this or a rucksack or whatever I need. And this chest rig is also extremely light, lightweight for what, uh, what you get. Um, I mean, you can carry a full combat load in everything yeah. you need in combat and airsoft combat. And yeah. it's, it's <laughs> super lightweight. It's very lightweight. And it even has a chest panel. Um, I don't use the chest panel on this because it, it's, I want to breathe more. So I actually stuff it back inside the chest rig. But if I were to pull that chest panel out, I really could carry everything I need. Which, and so this all plays into, so ventilation is always a priority. Yeah. Yeah, ventilation with any gear is always a priority, even with plate carriers. So you'll notice the plate carrier I have is all air mesh lined. Because even if you buy a plate carrier, so if you're going to buy a plate carrier as a big air softer, and you know, we're using the big, the term big loosely. I mean, you can see we have three different examples of three different types of big here, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not even like the most extreme no. of some examples. Um, but as you can see, I have a large, extra large plate pocket Mayflower APC here, and I have a medium cummerbund. The Mayflower APC is my favorite platform for plate carriers because you can size it so particularly. And this goes with any gear that you're going to be buying. I recommend that you accurately measure yourself in every relevant measurement that you see on every size chart and you buy to accommodate the largest of those measurements. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I end up with a large, extra large Mayflower APC with a medium cummerbund. And this fits me perfectly, just as a plate carrier should, rides comfortably, carries the weighted plates that I've gotten into using lately, and is absolutely no problem. As a result, I have a plate carrier that fits my 6'3", 255 pound frame because I was able to find something that fit my measurements. Was it expensive? Yes. This is not a cheap plate carrier. But Matt has some examples of some cheaper plate carriers yeah. that work. So, All right. so for affordable plate carriers, the best one I've ever had that fit well, and that's again <clears throat> talking about you know height-wise and everything, because the last thing you want is to get a plate carrier, and especially guys with guts. When you're walking, I see all the time guys are like, oh, I'll wear a combat shirt and a plate carrier, and then there's about eight inches of tummy. Just, <laughs> just out in the wild. Uh, <laughs> don't want that. I'll put up a picture of me when I had that happen. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. So, you want one that fits right and it's long enough. Um, the Condor Defender plate carrier. When you look at a picture of this thing on like Evex site or something, you're like, there's so much fucking molly on that. There's no way that fits anyone under 6'11". <laughs> I swear, it fits fine. It's not as tall as the image makes it appear. It was perfect. It was the exact right height. I actually put my real soft armor in it, and it fit perfectly for my size, which was awesome. Um, it was really heavy. I don't know why I did that. I also have a Defender <laughs> with soft armor in it right now. Yeah, it's tits. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> I gave that up because of the reason Eric was talking about with just ventilation. Ventilation. Yeah. Plus, uh, Condor actually came out with a newer uh, Coyote Brown over their old tan. And I had yep. gotten this when that didn't exist. <clears throat> and this was just too light for the kits we were running and everything. So I gave it, I gave it to our little buddy Nate. And now he just has it for free because I didn't want it. <laughs> so, <laughs> DRZ Productions. Um, 
But yeah, that's probably my favorite plate carrier I've ever had that's fit me. Yeah. Because every other plate carrier I've tried has just been too damn small. So I used the Condor Mopsy for a long time. Um, that, and at, at the time when I bought it, I was probably about 215 pounds. And when I got out of the army, I was about 225. Um, and I still had to modify the cummerbund to get that to fit yeah. right. Um, I had a Condor Mopsy way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, they're huge. Uh, yeah, they're, they're big plate carriers. Yeah, they're definitely big. I mean, they're not too big uh, from top to bottom, uh, but definitely no. the cummerbund is, is very large. Yes. Very accommodating. The elastic on it is very stretchy. Um, I that, actually... That's a point I'm going to make one. Continue. Okay. So um, what I actually had to do with a Condor Mopsy is um, there's... I had to weave... 550 cord through the molly just to get it smaller so it would fit me and i i'm not a i'm not a small dude like i have broad shoulders um i definitely have a nice beer gut going on um and uh that's that's a play carrier i would definitely recommend they're about i think 40 bucks um they're pretty rugged um the only reason i stopped using it is because i had one thread on the shoulder that kind of popped out and then I kind of discovered tactical tailor, and I discovered chest rigs. So I kind of moved on from plate carriers completely. I don't even use them. Um, yeah. I'll probably be getting one of these guys pretty soon because they're kind of nice. And we're building a special uh, cool yeah. guy kit. We're building we're building a, a special snowflake kit that uh, requires us to all have plate carriers because LARP cred. But yep, um, that's a point I want to make about elastic. This isn't just a big guy thing. Like this is a thing that I think we've all discovered through our own use elasticity in your cummerbund for a plate carrier is the best fucking shit ever. Why would you want to bend over? Yeah, like, (laughs) having elasticity in your cummerbund is fucking awesome. Because when you breathe, when you move, when you're fucking doing anything, Mm -hmm. and you have that plate carrier moving with you, it's especially great when you have that elasticity in the cummerbund in a plate carrier that is sized for the fact that you are a large individual. Because for me, number one, finding gear that fits is hard. And number two, finding gear that fits and moves with me because not only am I expecting to move, I'm most people can vouch who've actually played with me that I play pretty athletically. Mm-hmm. Like I move fast, I move constantly, and I don't stop. The three moving. of us do, really. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, the, we're the movers and shakers for sure. Exactly. Lately. And that's the thing. So when you're trying to actually move athletically along with having a large frame, all the elasticity you can get is great. You want that, mm-hmm. and you want that forever. So I agree, but this actually just popped another idea in my head. Um, another thing I see, and this has nothing to do with, well, th- not as much to do with what gear you're using, mm-hmm. but how you're using it. Um, I see a lot of bigger guys especially put these things on like it's a girdle. They yeah. really strap it on tight. Yeah. And they use up all the elastic, one, in putting it on. And uh, two, when you got that gut, it kind of makes a platform here. Yeah. So, like, you'll see a guy has already a plate carrier that's a little too short. Puts it on too tight, he goes prone or he crouches or bends or something, and when he gets back up, the plate's riding up here. Yes. He's got to like yeah. fight it, and part of that is also not a lot of people use weighted plates. Yep. Mm-hmm. So your gear won't settle back down, and you've basically just made yourself the most tactical bra that yes. there is. Um, I personally, when I've run plate carriers in the past few years, have been running weighted plates. Yeah. Either the training plates or putting sand in the fake ones, mostly because I'm a glutton for punishment and I feel yeah. guilty about how fat I am already. <laughs> so why not at least do a good workout while I'm playing? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it helps it ride way better too. Yes. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, I know all you Army veterans right now who've worn interceptors and IOTVs are saying, man, I wish I had elastics. What are, <laughs> what are those? You had webbing. It's close. Yeah. Those IOTVs, man. Mm. I almost miss it just because of all the Molly real estate that was on there, but then I remember that I had to wear a chest rig on top of it. And, and that it no elasticity. also cut out 
any breathing at all. There's no <laughs> airflow in those. Or a chance of survival if I ever do get hit. That also. Yeah. Because you're wearing a chest rig over an IOTV, which is... It's okay. They come off real easy when you need to work on a trunk. Rant complete. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason they moved on. Yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about... Um, I want to talk a little bit about one particular thing about uniform sizing. Mm -hmm. So we talked about gear. Mm -hmm. Uniform sizing. Okay. If you have any measurement that is a size above whatever size you're buying, buy that size above. I have discovered this the hard way, imploding multiple sets of combat it's pants. Funny every time. Yeah. <laughs> I, according to the sizing chart, am usually a large or extra large in most sets of combat pants. But I consistently have to buy a size up for extra large or double extra large. Because while my waist and my inseam match like a large long for BDU sizing, the size of my thighs and my butt yep. does not. Eric has... I cry every time. I have fast, but, dat ass. But it, he did too many squats, and by too many I mean about a thousand too many. Yeah. And now nothing fits like a human yeah. would. Wait, I'm offended. Uh, Eric <laughs> has a nicer butt than me? Correct. I'm Very afraid. much nicer. What? Uh, yes. Yeah. And I got none. I'm offended! <laughs> well, so, you're but I mean, if you're like me, and if you're a thick boy in them thighs and dat ass, buy a size up. I had the uh, disruptive combat pants. I bought the XL. According to the sizing chart, I should have been an XL. I get them and they fit like skinny jeans. I used them once and I blew out multiple points of the stitching. I buy a double XL and they fit like normal person pants and I've run them like three or four times and they're amazing. Buy a size up if you are a thick boy in the thighs and the butt. So you've covered people who have a butt Mm -hmm. Let me cover people who don't have a butt. Corey, can you hand me that uh, that device up there? Ah, yes This I is can. magical. This is tactical suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately the best thing I've ever bought, and it was 15 bucks. Um, they literally just have loops go around your belt. Um, when you don't have an ass and you're running around all day, and then let's say you're at Ball Car Ridge and it's, you know, raining for ever and your, <laughs> your pants are saturated to the point of there's no more water that could possibly be in the fabric um they just start sliding off you and then you're like let's assault this hill and you're like i'm gonna hold my pants up while i shoot one hand in <laughs> so i bought this after that and i've had no problems um if you don't have an ass and your pants can slide down get suspenders they're the shit yeah on the note of suspenders, uh, another gear option that we currently don't have on the table that I wish I would have brought is maybe you hate chest rigs. Maybe you hate plate carriers. Maybe you want some type of LBE that's just a belt with suspenders. Uh, this past weekend... I'll put a picture up. Okay, yeah. I ran um, a combat belt, uh, actually the LBX Assaulters belt, I believe, and a Condor harness. And it was a freeing experience. The dad bod gut ha hung out over the belt. No. Um, <laughs> I had not too much shaving. All, uh, <laughs> like a bunch of my magazines and my pistol and uh, like GP pouches I had on my belt. And let me tell you, if you're a big guy, I was moving. I was like a cross country runner back there. I was sticking back to the days before I didn't drink beer. <laughs> and it was a reminiscing, it was a reminiscing type of deal. I was mm -hmm. running like a gazelle. Or a water buffalo. More like a water buffalo. More like a water buffalo. <laughs> While we're talking, though, I want to address one particular fallacy, because you just went over a pretty lightweight option. Mm -hmm. One particular fallacy, and you actually kind of fell into this earlier, about being a big guy. Just because you're a big dude doesn't mean you have to carry everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. As I, I just like to. Yeah. As I pointed out <laughs> earlier, when you're carrying, let's say you're me before I lost weight and you're 345 pounds. When you're 345 pounds, every pound you carry in addition to that body weight is a pound you're carrying in addition to that body weight. So let's say you're carrying a 30 pound loadout. 
you now weigh 375 pounds. But think about the bragging rights. Yeah. But <laughs> look how much weight you carry. Yeah. But so another example is I weigh 255 pounds and I was wearing this plate carrier with, you know, 10 pounds of plates plus my gun and all that shit with my full loadout with this plate carrier on. I was probably pushing 300 pounds of body weight. You have to think about what you weigh total with all your gear on and do you really want to move weighing that much all the time? Smart with that, um, especially more for your Milsim games where mm -hmm. you're going to be in kit longer or have rocks or anything like yeah. that. Um, I suggest weighing yourself just in your uniform and then with everything. Yep. I'm talking your rifle, your sidearm, your gear, Magazines, your yeah, rock, everything. whatever you're carrying. Um, and try to kind of go by guidelines you'll find online. I can't remember all the exact numbers, but they'll tell you, like, for your weight, how much you should carry for backpacking. And with your kit and everything, especially if you're not, like, a vet, recent vet even, or, um, you know. Or a you fitness to, dude. Right. Backpack. You shouldn't be, like, for me, I think it says it should be around, like, a 30 to 40 pound pack. Yeah. I shouldn't be like, but my... Vest in my gun, add another 10 on top of that. I can do 50. Like, why? Why push yourself and kill yourself? There's no reason. No. Mm -hmm. Keep it reasonable. Um, cut corn. No, not cut corn. Cut weight. Make things as light as you can. Yeah. Um, cut the excess. There's yes. Excess. There's always crap that someone has that they don't need. My, my rule of thumb is wear the heavy stuff on your body. Like mm -hmm. for, for Milson West specifically. Tight to your wear, body. Wear the heavy clothes tight yep. to your body um, and the gear tight to your body. And then the lightweight stuff, throw that in the ruck. Yep. Because guess what? Milson West, you're ditching that ruck at some point. So that's going to feel great um, once you get to ditch that. And then when you are at like hour 35 and you're soaking wet and need to change, then you're changing in a nice dry lightweight clothes. And then you're going to be able to be even another step up if you're running up that hill. Yep. So that's my advice. I'm gonna I'm gonna go one step further. That doesn't necessarily apply to just big guys, but with with kind of the heat issue, um, with the helmets, I see people that are like, helmets part of my kit. I'm like, cool. You're at like let's say a 24 or 40 hour game, and I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe don't wear the helmet during the day. No, I didn't. Why yeah, would barely, I wear a real ACH all freaking day when I don't need night Unless vision? Unless you're doing like body day. armor rules. Right. Yeah. I don't need night no. vision in the day, so yeah. fuck this. It when I went to ball car <laughs> surge, that was my first Milson West with night vision. I had my helmet clipped to my ruck for most of the yeah. game. It is I wore either. a ball cap during the day. His helmet is a little lighter than mine. Yeah, no, mine's not a listed. vented, you know, bump helmet. But it still keeps heat in. Just it does. ditch the helmet yeah. Especially the when you have a counterweight yes. and a night vision goggle strapped to mm -hmm. it. Like, that wears on you. You look so long. operator, but it's also daylight. Why yeah. do you have night vision on you? Mm -hmm. Put it in a pouch. Even me, like, I've had multiple head injuries. I'm not wearing a helmet all the time. I mean, ask these guys. I don't wear a helmet a lot at open place because I know the terrain. But at night, um, for Milson West, I was wearing that damn helmet because at that point I wasn't. I couldn't see exactly where I was going, so then maybe it's time to put a helmet on. But in the daytime, I was just rolling a boonie. Yeah. Screw that extra stuff. Oh, yeah. So this is something I just thought of. <laughs> but an interesting thing when you're a big dude shopping for airsoft gear that some people don't seem to think about is slings for weapons. And this is something that uh, well, I think... There's, there's means, only one sling you should ever have, Eric. I mean, yes, you should only ever have the glorious <laughs> Viking tactics sling. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. So when you're buying a sling for Airsoft, and you're a large guy with a large frame, some guys will buy some, like, Chinese sling, you know, uh, off of yeah. Evic. And the one points that come to the you, nipple? Yeah, you definitely <laughs> have that experience. I've had that experience. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> when you buy that cheap one-point sling that you got off Evic, or you got off Airsoft GI, or even Shorty USA if you're a real OG. Oh, oh my, my god. god. I haven't heard <laughs> that fucking yeah. word in a long yeah, time. Yeah, right? What a cancer to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so you buy that cheap sling, but then you realize it's sized for children. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I need children. Yeah, mm -hmm. I recommend for rifle slings, especially if you have a nice rifle. I mean, like, fuck, I got this Crytac here with mm -hmm. this light mm -hmm. laser and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you if you have a nice rifle and you really want to keep it safe, buy a real sling. 
real deal slings, 99% of the time, are sized for such a wide variety of guys that anyone can make it work. Legitimately, my VTAC sling came in and I couldn't figure out what to do with the XS. I was like, why yeah. is there so much strap? <laughs> uh, just, yeah. I'm a huge... I'm a, I run a full-size M4. Yeah. It's not like I'm running an MP5. I was like, I don't... Where does it yeah. go? I'm a big guy. I've got this sling on the end here and on the front end here. And with my plate carrier, I still can run it cinched and have a wide range of adjustment. The Viking Tactics slings in particular, and a lot of real steel slings. And the LBX, but they're cheaper. And the LBX, they are cheaper, uh, and they come in more patterns. <laughs> Almost identical. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these slings are designed that you can cut the excess off. Mm -hmm. And they're meant to do that because they expect you to have this sling, size it for yourself, cut the excess off, or police it, because they want it to go over body armor and rucks and all that real stuff. Mm -hmm. I recommend real deal slings for any nice airsoft rifle that you have, because you don't want to drop this thing. Come on, you spent and, four hundred dollars on it. And yeah, it's crazy. I see people like you're saying, they'll spend four, five, six hundred bucks on a rifle, mm -hmm. and they're like, "I got this sling for fifteen dollars." Like a Viking Tactics is what, like forty bucks? Yeah, the LBX is like twenty, twenty-five, thirty, it, I think. 30, yeah, and it's about the same quality, honestly. Yeah. Why are Why'd you using answer? Why, a piece yeah. of crap that splits in half? That happened to someone recently. They're running Kyle. one point. Yeah. yeah. And his. No, he, he wasn't running one point. It was only a two point, but it was a crappy clip, HK hook. His fake HK hook just yeah. exploded off his sling. That Plus, was sad. On, on, on the topic of slings, why are you using a one point? Yeah. What the hell two point slings are the best. Yeah. Especially the glorious fucking tactics. We're not, we're not even going to talk about three points. That's just right out. No one wants to talk about three points. Especially, they're, they're especially like not handy at all when you're 215 pounds walking across the desert. In mop gear and an IOTV carrying two water jugs, and you have an M4 hanging in between, slapping you, you in the deck, slapping you in the ball, oh, God, and constantly. then you fall down a wadi into this. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is oddly specific, Corey. Yeah, it's almost like Corey's salty about a very particular military experience. I could cry. I could cry. <laughs> so much I feel strongly about two point swings. Please, no two point swings. Yeah. So, so there we go. That's Please. a yeah. very particular recommendation of. Mm -hmm. Slings, you know, buy a sling that will fit you and that will carry your nice investment of a rifle. Because with good airsoft guns, they really are a fucking investment they at are, a certain they point. Are. All right, so the only other thing that we didn't really, we kind of half touched on, but didn't really go into numbers yeah. on, is uh, the cost of some of these uh, different yeah. options. So for we have a like, range of costs here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even on just this table, I think. Cost-wise, obviously the lowest is going to be over here. This is a knockoff South African assault vest. It runs about this one I bought for thirty-five on sale on Amazon. Um, Corey's got what a legit Mark II. Yeah, What's yeah. What'd you Mark get that II, for shipped? Uh, I got it for one forty-six shipped from yeah. Australia. With chest rigs, though, you can also go like the Condor route. Oh, yeah. yeah, which oh, is chest really, rigs. Like, you can get great. so many cheap chest rigs. The Tactical Tailor Mav, even if you want to get like a nice U.S. made one, I think it's it was like, like sixty dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my vote in for Condor again. Mm. I legitimately was working on pouch inserts with my Kydex one night, and wasn't paying attention because it was three in the morning. And I put down my heat gun and melted a strap, but a quarter of it's still there. I have used that chest rig ten times since then, and nothing has failed. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> it's almost like Condor isn't garbage. Oh, wow. Oh. Huh. My Mayflower feels <laughs> insulted. <laughs> so and Eric, the, the Mark Q's over here no. like, really? You're still talking about Condor? Yeah. And I'm here? <laughs> how, how many dollars is into this exact? I want the pack... The chest rig integrated. How many dollars so is this? Uh, so the the chest rig was about two hundred and thirty. The uh, actually no, chest was about two twenty. Oh, okay. Then the, uh, yeah. <laughs> then the the plate carrier is about two twenty five. Uh, so that's about four hundred forty five dollars, and then one hundred ninety for the pack, plus the plates. Yeah, we're Are you pushing a grand. You're like seven seventy five. Yeah, we're we're looking at like seven hundred and fifty dollars for this setup. You're so so <laughs> <laughs> well, plus the helmet, we're at like a grand right here. Are you Bruce Wayne? I wish. How do you afford this? This I sell my body. It's uh, less than a hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, and this is like seven hundred and fifty dollars. Mine offers ballistic protection. <laughs> That's a good thing for you. Yeah, and mine is $750 of Gucci nylon. 
So if you're willing to spend a lot of money, you can get whatever the fuck you want in whatever size you want, even custom made by was, a tailor who is our friend. I was just gonna say, there's always custom gear too, which with this Gucci kit that we're putting yeah. together, I am planning to have him make me a plate carrier. Yep. Good job, Engage Tactical. Check out Engage Tactical on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty great. He's, <laughs> he's a friend of the channel, and he's also a super cool guy. You should give him money. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that's yeah. That pretty much covers it all. Yeah, I think uh, I think generally speaking. Uh, Buy the right size, uh, buy a size up when you need to. Uh, be honest with yourself about what you should be wearing. I, I know this sounds shitty, like this sounds like I would love to fit into a large, but yeah, like I, I would love to buy an extra medium JPC and mm. you know just look fucking huge all the time, but no, it doesn't work for me. And you can still look high speed ish when you're bigger. <laughs> like yes. Eric has his super kit, you may have to spend a few more dollars. You're not going to do a $50 a few, yeah. JPC and be like, so high speed. Yeah. I just have to wear a dangler and then I no one knows I'm fat. Nothing says high speed like your moves popping out around your plate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I think we managed to finish this mostly sober. Mostly. I'm I not really that sober. I only went but... through three in just the filming. Yeah. All right, uh, so I think so. we will call this a video. Hopefully you guys found it entertaining and helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, we are more than happy to help any other extra thick boys find any gear that they might need. Mm -hmm. So once again, I've been E-House. Lutz. I'm Corey. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. It's so good. We're so good at this. Oh, was nice. <laughs> that was like 50 minutes of nonsense. Shut up, it's good. No, it was good. It was a lot of good information there. Also, when my helmet flipped, I noticed how much mud got in this at the last Milton West, and I am sad. That's a good sign. It's not. Who wants more beer? Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Check the description below if you'd like to buy a t shirt or a patch. And use the coupon code JUDY10 for 10% off of your next order at Amped Airsoft. Thank you again for watching, and praise Judy.